Hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Coffee Sketch Jan 2022. Coffee Sketch Jan 2022. How's it feeling? Are you getting into the swing of things? I hope so. I hope so. Usually by a week in, it's you're starting to expand a little bit more, right? You're starting to get, oh, I can do this. I can do this. At least I hope. The, the, the drawings that I'm seeing in the group are fantastic. I love seeing them. I love hearing the stories. I love hearing about the materials that you use. So, well done, well done. So let's warm up our hands a little bit before we do our drawing warm ups, right? So I, um, in looking at all the photo, the drawings, I was noticing that some people were like, "Huh, I, I'm see, I, I'm seeing this issue." How do I work out this issue, right? Which is what happens when you start a drawing practice. You start working out issues. You start working out logistics of drawing, right? That's why the thumbnails, which I never was a believer of, thumbnails help you work out logistics. I'm not saying you have to do a thumbnail of the coffee sketches because the coffee sketches basically are thumbnails, right? They're not like finished paintings. I'm not a big fan of finished paintings, but it's just because this is my shtick. I like the fast sketching. I like energetic lines. I like continuous lines. This is what I like. And so that doesn't mean that's what you have to like. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to figure out what do I like, right? There's no, you have your own style. and But it takes time to sort of discover it, right? And you have to have like an inspiration. What is your inspiration for doing it, right? Like if you're just drawing because someone thinks it's cool or it's a cool, it is a cool hobby, right? It's one of the coolest things I've ever done. <laughs> but you kind of have to find your own reason to stick with it, right? We're set like almost seven days, one week into this and you know, people will start dropping out. It's just the nature of things, right? And more people will join as they hear about it. Be sure to share the news, okay? Um, but there has to be something that drives you to want to draw, right? Like for me, <laughs> for me, it's a connection to my mother, right? I, I have mentioned that I had a bit of a dilly of a relationship with my mother. Um, and upon her passing, it was pretty transformational. And I started making art for her, basically. It was more like... I felt like if I could make my mom smile, <laughs> cry, um, it would make me smile. And so <laughs> I didn't expect to cry. So my mom actually, <laughs> when I was a kid, she used to she used to paint a million like plaster objects, right? Like plaster W.C. Fields and Frankenstein and monsters and you know all these monsters would be in the kitchen that she would be painting. And um, there was also a whole series of owls, and uh, she made this. <laughs> she made this owl for me, and I don't know how in the world I've been able to hang on to this after moving, 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 moving. That's all I've done my whole life, but somehow I've been able to hang on to this, right? So last night when I was uh, like, oh, what am I gonna do? I got a new coffee grinder. Am I gonna sketch that? No, no, no. I need some tea. I'm cold. So I'm like, oh. I'm gonna do a little night sketch, right? So it's the story of my tea by candlelight with my mom's little owl, right? So, <laughs> I mean, I have this sitting next to me, uh, next to my bed, right? But now I have it in a painting, right? So it's my connection and it made me cry. So it's an em emotional connection, right? So um, I think we all have to find our own connection, our own reason for wanting to make art, right? Art is emotional. Art makes us sometimes feel bad, like, oh, I can't do this, right? Until you can do it. Art can make you feel really great too, right? Like this, it makes me feel really good. <laughs> and uh, so I hope you can find, if you haven't already found your way, I hope that uh, you do, because I think making art is one of the, I mean, it's saved my life, really, honestly. Let's be honest about it. Okay, let's do some warm-ups. Enough, enough with the tears, okay? <laughs> let's see if we can transition you over here without too much... Uh... Hey, 
getting a little smoother at that, aren't I? You know, I'll give you the whole, um, <laughs> a whole glimpse into my paint inventory here. So let's see if I have this lined up. Alrighty, I'll go a little bit higher. I kind of like this uh, view a little bit better because you can see the whole paper and outside of it, right? When it's locked right in, it's a little hard to... Well, I don't think it's hard, but I think this is just an easier way of doing it. So let me have a sip of my coffee. Alrighty, so... <clears throat> um, Part of this warm-up practice is doing a lot of the same boring things over and over and over and over again, right? Hey, there's an eyelash. <laughs> I guess that means I have to make a wish, right? So, um, let's see. This camera shows me as being left-handed. I am not. <laughs> well, I'm going to take this up just a little bit. I am right-handed, but uh, these Facebook Lives have a mind of their own, right? So... The continuous line, like I said, I do a lot of boring warm-ups over and over and over and over again because it helps strengthen my line-making, art-making abilities. I, pre-COVID, I never warmed up. I never took any time to even rub my hands, right? That was a post-2020 um, thing. I won't say post-COVID. Um, but so this, well, and I also with the Zoom sketch sessions, right? I thought, well, we need something to warm up, right? So this is, every Zoom sketch session is, starts with a warm-up. And we do a lot, we repeat a lot, but we also do new things too, right? I guess that's, does that make sense? I, because in doing something over and over and over again, you can see your progress, right? Even with the, um, doing a coffee cup. I mean, my original coffee cup sketchbook from seven years ago, I have photos of it, right? Unfortunately, I lost the sketchbook but I have photos from it and I can see, I was really trying to figure out how do you draw a round coffee cup, right? How do you get it to look round? How do you get it to have volume? And I could see that I did not know how to do it, but I, so I just kept drawing it. So it was a 30, uh, that was December. So yeah, it was a 31 day challenge that I gave myself and it was fun. It was Christmas time and you know, there were no lockdowns or whatever, <laughs> viruses floating around. Um, so I went to a different cafe, and my birthday's in December. So, you know, I just kind of made it a whole festive thing in San Miguel de Allende. And um, I could see from the start of the month to the end of the month, I could totally see my progress. I could totally see how I got a better hang of the understanding of a coffee cup. And uh, by the end of the challenge, I was drawing me drinking it in a cafe with a dog, with a car driving by, with the window open. And <laughs> um, so that was just my path with it, right? I, I, you don't have to do that. This was my path with it. I think I've always sort of been destined to draw life in in, um, does that make sense? To draw life, right? Like, I like drawing scenes, like the one of the, tea, my cup of tea last night with the candle. That was a moment in time. And uh, that's what I like to draw, moments in time. That's the beautiful thing about urban sketching, you know, it's moments in time. And I'm not saying, oh, you have to do urban sketching. Uh, you do your own thing, right? Like, I also believe in other forms of making art, right? <laughs> Obviously, there's millions of ways to do it. Um, but, by and large, 
generally speaking, I love to draw in the moment, live on location, even if it's in my bedroom uh, and by candlelight, right? <laughs> that was a new one for me, and um, and it was a surprising. I didn't plan it. I tend not to plan any of the things I draw, even with my coffee sketches and. I'm doing a lot of videos out in the streets of Mexico City where I'm drawing buildings in continuous line and I, generally speaking, I don't plan it. Well, maybe a little bit because there's certain buildings I do want to draw. So I've had to certainly research best architecture and where, you know, where do I want to be? A lot of traffic, a lot of people, so I want to make sure I'm in a place where I can safely film myself because it's just someone once said to me oh you should hire an assistant I'm like ha yeah <laughs> yeah stand here all day while I draw not all day but you know I'd rather figure out a way to tie a camera to my head and film myself than have an assistant right so I'm a very spontaneous in the moment energetic artist I don't think I've ever described myself like that before, but I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm an energetic artist. And uh, so it's up to you to figure out what kind of artist you are. And don't even get caught up in the fact I'm not an artist, right? I know really true blue artists who re refuse to call themselves artist. It's such a charged word, right? Even with me, my mom was the artist and my brother, right? So I just gave up until I couldn't resist it anymore. I had to, I always knew I was an artist, but I, I never really embraced it until after my mom died, which is unfortunate because I think she would totally love my art. But I, like I said, if I, I feel like if I can make her laugh, which means I make myself laugh, I've reached her. And so that's, like I said, that's my own little, oh, look, I ran out of room. <laughs> End it with a heart. Look it, can I just like, just make mention of how tidy my lines are? This is something that has literally come in practice. There's very few collisions. That's not one. Do I have any? Almost. I like to look at my lines and say, how did I do? There's a little collision there. And that doesn't even matter, right? Here, I think I stopped and got a sip of coffee. And I can always tell where I did something, right? And this is a Sharpie, so it's fatter. I usually do this in ballpoint pen, but I don't think you'd be able to see it on the camera. So I love how beautiful this looks, right? I'm very, very proud of my lines, and I hope <laughs> I hope you are proud of your line make, or you get to there at that point, right? Am I still on? Is this is this thing still on? Oh yeah, hi. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do another one here. So, the coffee cup is such a great challenge because it's, it's so simple, yet it's hard. <laughs> uh, because it's got, it's got, well here I'll use my, you know, it's got this, this, this. This one doesn't have a handle and I don't have one near me that does. But... There are ways that you can tell this story. The light, right? The light is white. And where the light is not hitting it is dark, right? So lights and darks help tell the story of a coffee cup. Even at night, and let me show you this. At night, now this is not precise, but I'm not a precise person, right? Like. Generally speaking, this side would be in darkness because the light, the candlelight is coming from here. 
So this would be in darkness as well as the shadow. But because I went to such degree to paint the words, and this is one of those Starbucks cups, which I'm not a big fan of Starbucks, but I love my Juanajuato cup that has like tunnels and mummies and guitars and Don Quixote, which is another connection to my mother, uh, silver mines, all that, right? So I went and I drew all this and I'm like, I don't wanna cover it in blackness, so I'll just put a little moon glow over here and then put the shadow here. So with the light coming here, I left the white there, and then the dark just on the other side. This cup mm, should be darkened out with the shadow, but I really wanted to preserve the Juanajuato, the owl, and the flame. So there's that. Uh, another thing I wanna point out, as long as we're right here, is I saw someone making a to-go cup yesterday and uh, they had the uh, perspective of it here and then when it got down to the bottom of the cup, it was straight, right? So when you have a coffee cup, and this isn't even precise, I can see it, but I, again, I'm not a precise person. I'm not an architectural illustrator, right? I am a little wonky. So whatever the curve of this is, this would match it. It would go down a little bit because it's farther away. This is closest to me, that's farther away. So this curve here would be the same curve here of any cup, right? Now there's ways to bend perspective, but generally speaking, when you're trying to get a grip and see what the heck is going on, how do I get my cup round? Whatever this circle is, this one, this line matches it. A little bit smaller, right? Whew. Same curve as right here. Same curve as right here. And that, um, honestly, that takes a little time to see if you're just starting out. The... Um, I just thought of something else here. Oh, when I am first drawing, uh, like whatever coffee cup I have, whether I'm out on a, in a cafe or in my house, the first thing I notice is what is the shape of the oval? It's rarely ever round, right? Unless you're looking right over it, but at, depending on the angle, right? And I try to keep this in a little bit same as that, right? So the first thing I look at is what is the shape of the opening? I try to like capture that shape with my eye. And then I'm to the point when I start drawing, then I don't look at things anymore. Uh, I do it from memory or just from an understanding of perspective, right? This I drew with my brush pen, which is a powerful pen. And because of that, I don't connect the lines. I keep them jiggy, 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 jiggy. I don't like to do Continuous line. Hey, see, I'm not all about continuous line, right? So I'm sketchy, sketchy. So the first thing I do is look at the roundness. What shape is that circle, right? <laughs> Depending on how you're looking at it. And then I do this and then I try to match it, right? And then I just go crazy from there. Or, you know, I'm on my way is basically what I will say. So, um, yeah, still there. <laughs> I swear to God, I know I'm going to be talking to myself one of these times. So, uh, with the coffee cup, right? So, there's the circle, and there's the circle, right? That, I mean, not <laughs> totally, but I think you understand what I'm saying. I hope you do, right? Like this opening matches that, but it's always a little smaller there, right? And then I'm gonna put a little plot, big plato. Look at the size of that one. And then the lip of the plato comes a little bit bigger, but then it goes back in, right? And then if you've been following me, you know I have spoon issues and I just wrecked it. <laughs> but that's okay, because I'm here to figure out my spoon issues. Well, I think I kind of saved it in the... I put a little heart on that spoon. 
<laughs> and then with the spoon, I put a, a, so you see the girth of it, right? Just on this side. Oh, it looks like a buttocks, right? <laughs> um, okay. And so then there's, um, you know, your coffee could be super flat. Or you're looking at it more eye level, right? So here it's a little... See, it's a little flatter. Is that the right word? Oh, now the spoon. Oh my goodness, I don't even know. I guess so you would see more of the neck. I'm not going to put a buttocks on this one. <laughs> right, so you'd see a little bit more. See, I don't like, I mean, honestly, I like the, it's curvier this way, but uh, it doesn't even matter. This is a practice, right? The practice cup. So, um, <laughs> I put a little steam on that one. So if you're doing these warm-ups, and I really hope you are, play with the like the angle of it, right? To try to say like how what am I looking at here? Yeah, I can tell I just wrecked my spoon. Wrecked is a bad word. I need to stop using that. You know. Um, you know what? If I just keep doing this spoon. Thing, I'll get it worked out, right? <laughs> um, okay, so let's draw one from kind of up above. I don't know. Can I do this? Let's see. Oh, I ran out of room. <laughs> Whoops, okay. Let's see. Um, Oh, a little bit better. Ah, oh, a little hearts in my latte. Now, as we know, there's a million different styles to mugs, right? This is kind of more of a squared off one. And then we're, I'm going to put the spoon in it. There we go. And let me try the uh, Starbucks. Well, it's not Starbucks. But it's to-go cups, right? See that curve there? Now I have to think about this because the lid, the lid, the lid, which comes out and around. Oh, I just totally wrecked it there. And it's kind of this thing here, right? And then there's another circle there. Muscle manus, right? I can't remember. It's been so long since I've had a... There. So I'm going to stop here just because see how the this actually comes down, right? It goes out over. Um, not precise, but uh, that's not... I'm not here to be precise, right? So... Um, and you know what? Uh, if you Google continuous line anything, you'll find a continuous line drawing. Like if you're a horse person and you want to draw horses, <laughs> Google continuous line drawing horses and uh, you'll be amazed at all the ways you can warm up. Now, don't copy them and sell them, right? This is uh, literally just for warm up. Oh my God, look at my spoon. Uh, see, look how simple that one is, right? They don't all have to try to keep them um, simple, yet fresh, energetic lines. I'm all about that. And then, yum, yum, yum. There we go. Okay, so there's our, I like to count just because I'm a weirdo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did I count one, two, three, four, five, six? So yeah, ten. 
<laughs> so <clears throat> there we go. Should be nice and warmed up. Let's see if I can do this quickly. There we go. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, extreme close up, right? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that's my little wisdom for the day. And I hope that you hang in there. Find your reason to make art, right? I mean, mine, like I said, mine started is kind of because of my mom, but then it's sort of self-serving because my mom said to me, I wish I had been nicer to you, right? And and that statement has, has, has tr transitioned to me being nicer to myself. And me being nicer to myself means making art every day. And now I wanna take you with me. <laughs> Bring you along with me, okay? So have a great day. Uh, January 6th, a little funky out there. Focus on your art. Uh, Three Kings Day, right? Three Kings Day. So, um, Thanks for being here, and I'll see you tomorrow. Woohoo! <laughs>